So, <clears throat> here we are. I know, a little late on the, uh, a little late on the delivery, but the delivery still came, you know? So, yeah, college football, October 18th. It's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday night, you know? And everything is going the way it should be going, you know? Everything is going the way it should be going, and that is how things are, you know? That's how things are. USC, still the same kind of team, if you get what I mean. See, a week seven, you know, USC, they got smacked around by the Irish, Caleb Williams throwing picks at the pick at the pick. Offense not getting into a rhythm, getting smacked around. I mean, this was the type of game that I thought USC would lose. And again, these were one of these games that I said at the beginning of the year that this could that this is one of those games that Notre Dame needed to win. Now Notre Dame is pretty much out of the discussion for the CFP, but that defense we knew was legit. So kudos to them because Kayla Williams could not handle the lights. He could not handle the lights at all. <clears throat> But there are some Pac-12 teams that do, that can handle lights. Oregon State, EJU, them boys are playing some good football out there in Corvallis. Defense, on point, offense, really good. Everything's everything's working out perfectly for Oregon State. They got to keep the momentum up, though. So there's that. You got to keep that in mind. Tez Walker, back in action. Cooked the Miami defense three times, three big touchdowns. Miami finally completely knocked out of the polls. They should have been knocked out last week, but they're they're completely gone. Season over for the Hurricanes yet again, pretty much, basically. Um, Another ACC team that had their season derailed was Louisville. They got blown out by Pitt. Very disappointing there. Um, You know, speaking of disappointments, you have Iowa's offense. That offense is absolutely garbage. Somehow, some way, that offense, one of the probably the worst offense in the country, is back in the top 25. Sluggish win against Wisconsin. Their backup quarterback, who's now in because Kate Marinara sauce, you know, he's out um, with an injury for God knows how long. And I mean, t- they knocked out Tanner Morikai, the defense did. Only put up, you know, Wisconsin only put up six points. I mean, this this is a recipe for Iowa potentially going 11-1 in a terrible Big Ten West because Big Ten West just looks absolutely terrible, man. It looks terrible. Speaking of other things that look terrible, Joe Milton, he only had 100 passing yards against Texas A&M. Uh, against the Texas A&M team that was more known for their run defense. They couldn't really do too much on run defense, apparently. But it is what it is. Um, you know, Milton only threw for 100 yards. That's not going to get it done. Defense did get it done, however. Uh, another thing in the SEC is that Brock Byers, he's out of action. You know, hurt himself in the Georgia Vanderbilt game. But Georgia still took care of business, as did the rest of the top four. Purdue got smacked around by Ohio State. Uh you know, Indiana got smacked around by Michigan, and Syracuse got smacked around by Florida State. So, top four took care of business. And another team, you know, that isn't really playing like a top four team is Alabama. They struggled again on defense. They were outscored, what, 21 to nothing in the second half, and yet they scraped out a win through, you know, same old Alabama stuff. They scrape out a win somehow. But they got the win. And then Oregon and Washington, they put on a show. That was a movie right there. You know, Washington State got blown out. But, you know, Washington, the Huskies, man, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, man, they put on a show. It came down to a field goal. And, of course, you know college kickers. You know college kickers do what college kickers do, miss kicks in clutch situations. And Oregon loses. So, you know, top ten. These are still two top 10 teams right now. And Penix with another four touchdown performance, including the clutch touchdown late. Certainly Washington has the hearts of America right now. So that's week seven in a nutshell. 
And this slate this week is really, really interesting. You have, again, you have the big noon game, which I know people are still mad at, but it's a top 10 matchup. Penn State, Ohio State, big time game. Uh, you have Tennessee, Alabama in the afternoon. You know, if you want, if you want some other things to watch in that afternoon window, you'll want to take a look. Even though Washington State, you know, has two losses, they could still put up a good fight against Oregon with Cam Ward and everything like that. And uh, that late window, oh boy, a couple of good ones: Duke, Florida State, Utah, USC, and then very late, Michael Penix after dark again. Huh? Big time game. And then there's some other stuff in that early window you want to check out as well. Again, UCF, the Dylan Gabriel reunion with UCF, Air Force, Navy. Air Force is ranked now. Tulane's back in the rankings. Uh, Missouri got a big win against Kentucky. So, you know, there, there's, there's some other games there as well that are interesting. As far as the Week 7 storylines go, or rather the Week 8, I should have said Week 8. I don't know why it said, I don't know why it says Week 7. But forgot to edit it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, big game. Ohio State, Penn State. Drew Aller, he's been doing good enough for the Penn State Nittany Lions this year. Good enough is like, you know, passing. Kind of like J.J. McCarthy. You know, he's done good enough. But really, it's that defense for Penn State, one of the best defenses in the country. And, you know, Ohio State is steadily improving. I would say, you know, they're completely inconsistent, but they're steadily improving things. To where you know they can just they, they can just do no wrong. I'll tell you that much. They can do no wrong. So, um, yeah. So it, it's really it's really about it's really about you know the receivers for Ohio State. Really, uh, run game has been a little bit inconsistent. There's been some injuries in the backfield. Defense, it's getting better, but really, it's about Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, come on. Ohio State has Marvin Harrison Jr. running around on the field, catching bombs after bombs after bombs or 15 yard passes or whatever for touchdowns. So, you know, it's about the chemistry between McCord and these receivers. They, that has to continue in order to stop Penn State's defense, really. Um, again, you're going to have to get past that front seven. Um, corners, you know, they've been tested very little. Um, so it's really about that front seven for Penn State that Ohio State's going to have to get past. And if they can do that, I, I think think things will be okay for them. But if Ohio State loses this game, oh boy, oh boy, the salt will be tremendous. Penn State, same thing, salt will probably be tremendous. Whoever loses this game is going to be a leg down in this thing. So, you know, in the three-way race between Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State, this is the first part of the round robin. And, and I mean, we are going to have a doozy of a game. And, you know, speaking of another game that's going to be a doozy, it's going to be interesting to see how, a, yet again, another defense that's really, really good but a different situation, though. Cam Rising is still, his status is still up in the air. So we don't know if he's going to play. Probably not. But Utah, defense definitely looks the part. It's the offense that can't do anything. But yeah, Caleb Williams might get harassed yet again. This is a real possibility. Um, again, dynamic offenses so far, like UCLA's, for example, or Cal's, you know have been stymied completely by Utah. So, yeah, this is not going to be easy. Not going to be easy at all for USC. Trojans have to win this game to stay in the race for the Pac-12 and the national championship. So, this is big. And although Tennessee and Alabama, you know, I... Uh, Unfortunately, I do have to talk about this because, you know, the battle of the most mid-teams I've ever seen in my entire life, Tennessee and Alabama. Uh, Tennessee, you know, they championed this Josh Heupel fast offense, but nothing could be done, you know, because this team is very inconsistent. And you have Alabama, Jalen Milrow, you know, he can throw deep bombs and, you know, make a couple plays with his feet sometimes, but, you know, the offensive line is bad. The defense gets shredded 
at inopportune times. The running game is very inconsistent. Chase McClellan sometimes, you know, can't even get, you know, a good block to get a run. So his rushing stats are pretty inconsistent if you're a better, uh, you know. Things are just inconsistent for both sides of this party. And one of these teams is going to lose. One of these teams is going to be pretty much out of the SEC race. The other is going to be in prime position. So one of Alabama or Tennessee is going to have to win. Who is going to have it more? Alabama's defense, you know, just has a little bit less than Tennessee's, I think, in my personal opinion. But then again, you know, both these teams could just rise up and have a good defensive game. And I and I, I just have I would just have nothing to say at that point because, you know, it's the third Saturday in October. Big game. Um, Riley Leonard, he's back. He's back in the lineup. And this is a scary Florida State team that's continuing to improve. Yes, it's the ACC defenses, but that defense from Florida State is scary. The offense, pretty, pretty good too. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup for Duke. Um, also, is looking, you know, pretty good, pretty good, and you know, you know, pretty, pretty good at times, but not all the time. So, yeah, yeah. So that the Duke Florida State is going to be in that other matchup in that late window alongside Utah USC to look forward to, you know. And then Air Force and Tulane, these are the two group of five teams that are ranked right now. They are leading the path for a group of five bid. And, well, it's, it's going to be interesting. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. If you, if you know what I mean? So, yeah, Air Force, Tulane, they're ranked inside track for them. JMU isn't bowl eligible, unfortunately. So that's pretty unfortunate there. Um, like, still not bowl eligible at the moment. They should be, but you know, it is what it is. Um, Iowa, again, one step closer to getting the big win, the Big Ten West title. Um, the, Gold, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota are coming to play Iowa. In a national televised game on NBC, so NBC gets the glory of televising a Iowa game. That's just, uh. and then you know, Washington they cannot have a hangover against the Sun Devils. You have all the momentum in front of you. Your top five in the country don't want to lose that momentum now. And then there's three teams that you know have slightly easier tests, but these, but these are still, you know, big tests. Again, Oklahoma playing. You see out the Dylan Gabriel revenge game and Texas playing Houston and Michigan playing Michigan State. Um, yeah, so there's, there's, there's some big time things going on. So things have to, you know, improve on one end, you know? So, yeah. So that would pretty much do it for me, you know. Um, that's all I got to say about week eight. Week eight is coming. We get it started already with the midweek Conference USA games. Next thing you'll know, Maction will be back and will be in the November. And then, you know, CFP rankings will start to get released and everything like that. Everything's going to be fine and dandy and a doozy as, you know, we're getting closer to November, getting closer to the grind coming to these teams. So the race to the national championship continues. And, again, big week this week. There's four top 25 matchups. We saw, what, eight top 25 teams lose last week? You know, so things are coming to an end. I'll see y'all again in just a few moments. You know, I mean, about a couple hours or so, talking to the NFL. Um, or rather, I might just, you know, delay that until like tomorrow morning, you know, kind of do a little premiere thing. So we'll, we'll see what I do. I'll, I'll figure it out in a moment. But in any case, y'all take care and I'll see y'all soon. Good night.